Oh, we know that was going to be up and downs in the season, having a brand new coach and everything. You know, the difference from being in Dayton a couple nights ago and being home tonight was we didn't get lost to the game. You know, at Dayton, we we fought for through adversity. We fought being down 10 and a half. We fought being down 10 in the second half. We had a different type of energy level that we sustained for at least 36 to 35 minutes out of a 40-minute game against Dayton. And um, it seems like we never just got lost in this game today, individually and collectively. Uh, it's, it's on to the next one, you know. Um, now, we knew that we would, you know, go through some things to get here. We knew that we had, you know, a long way to go. We knew that we had, you know, a lot of growth in us. And um, that's where the fun part came into play. And uh, you could see that. And we had a lot of fun a couple nights in Dayton. And then tonight looked like you just knocked the win out of us. Um, I guess we, we have this thing that we say we have to play with no expectations. You know, not expecting to win, not expecting to lose. But, you know, expecting um, – this team to come out and just be aggressive and play to a certain momentum and, you know, a certain type of aggression. And uh, we just missed that tonight. You know, we looked tired, but we shouldn't have been tired. And um, we just got to move on. Coaches and players talk all the time about response to adversity. Mm -hmm. What did your coaches ask of you in terms of how to respond to the Dayton game? And did you see any of what was asked tonight? After the Dayton game, you know, they just asked us to continue to improve. We always say, um, you know, they have no expectations out of us, um, but to work hard and, and, and come in and be blue collar guys every day. And um, after the Dayton loss, we had two, three really good practices. Um, and, um, you know, having that, it's kind of shocking to go through what we went through tonight. But, um, you know, we just have to just turn the page. It's not too much of a, you know, I can't really look back on it too many times. As a leader, I have to continue to push. Um, and um, I have to make sure everybody else is ready to play. We can't sleep and, and, and take away from what Evansville will bring on Saturday. And um, hopefully you guys see a better team. You will see a better team on Saturday. Yeah, I was going to ask you if anything surprised you about tonight with just the play and just you know, how you guys came out. No, actually, it's kind of crazy. Um, uh, our coach, Coach Crow, had this scout. And... Everything that we went over, everything that we memorized was ran tonight. Um, we were just steps behind, I would say, in energy and lackluster performance energy-wise. And um, on the defensive side of the ball, um, we're still learning offensively. We struggled there in Dayton, even though we put up points and, and you know, happened to be in the game around a certain time point. We're still struggling offensively. But um, on the defensive side of the ball, we just have an expectation to, you know, kind of turn guys and, you know, make it a little harder for the, the opposing team. Tonight was tough. You went to the locker room at halftime, down 13. A little bit closer in the second half. What kind of adjustments did you talk about at halftime? What did you see as a difference, if any, between the first and second half? Uh, coming into halftime, down 13, we believe that we were going to come back and win uh, this game. Um, I don't think we should think any other way. But we knew that we had to turn around um, our energy level. We had to you know, shift our energy level and our focus. and. Um, we thought that we were playing soft. You know, we would let them come in and, you know, we played soft for the first half. I'll leave it at that. But um, we just had to pick it up, and we never picked it up, you know. I try to sit here and make sure I say the right things because it hurts me just as much as it hurts the guys in the locker room. So just trying to be a positive representation, and um, we'll be fine. Right, it's a little tough, you know, when you're on the court and, um, you know, for the majority of the game like I am, and, you know, you have this thing in your mind that you want to do and you have this um, set in your mind that you want to win, and it goes back to having no expectations. So um, expectations on winning and losing, we should get lost in the game, you know, whether it's on defense, on offense. Every play we should be looking to, you know, get a stop, get on the loose ball, um, get a rebound, and um, those are the things that we're missing. I think we're kind of just self-centered at some times, which is our coaches tell us all the time, and um, I'm somebody to blame on that. But to be out there and to have to turn the page as a leader, my recovery mentally starts now. So it's already started. So Several guys, particularly you and 
Zurich. It seemed like we took a beating all night and were on the floor several times. Do you worry about, can you go through a full season taking that kind of physical pounding? Yeah, I definitely can. Um, try not to give the refs a hard time about it. I thought she was going to shift it into a referee type thing where, you know, maybe I need to bark for something, you know, extra with the whistle. But, you know, our bodies can sustain it. And, and if it can't, we have guys on the bench who can come in and do what we can't. And if we continue to play defense, if we continue to take plays off, me, myself, and I can say Zurich because that's my little brother, so me and him included. If we take plays off, there's somebody on that bench waiting to, you know, do what we can. So we're holding everybody accountable, and uh, we definitely can sustain, you know, that type of play. Credit to New Mexico. They they uh, they did a great job. I, you know, in all honesty, I'm really disappointed for Justin Crow, who did a great job with the scouting report and uh, laid out exactly what we would see in the game tonight, and we basically saw what uh, what he had prepared for us. And our effort wasn't as good as our preparation. And I, I feel like uh, coming off a competitive road game, we're a little bit disappointed in the outcome, that our overall energy level and competitive spirit would, uh, would show up tonight, and it didn't. And New Mexico did a great job of taking advantage of just that. And, the numbers and the stats aren't as relevant as the as the competitive spirit or the lack thereof that happened in the game, and um, and so I'm I'm disappointed in our in our effort. Um, I know we've got a group that is uh, that is capable of bringing much much more to the table, and um, as we try to develop an identity, our our competitive spirit has to be tied to that, and that wasn't evident tonight and uh, so it's disappointing you know like I said credit to them and we obviously have got a lot of work to do coaches talked about response to adversity what did you ask after Dayton to of your guys to respond to that and beyond effort did you see any of what you asked out on the floor tonight? well you know what uh, tonight is adversity the Dayton game was a loss. You know, um, college basketball, you go on the road against a good team, you fight hard, we got a lot to learn, uh, we didn't execute great, and we lost the game. And so you do try to respond to that. But in and of itself, it's a loss more than it is, you know, the, it, it, you know adversity is a, is a sort of a space that you're in for a period of time, and it's a matter of how you get out of it. And I don't think we were in a negative space. We were just disappointed in the outcome of the game. Tonight presented some adversity. Now we got something we really have to respond to, and we got some soul searching. And it's good. This time of year, we're trying to develop an identity as, as a team. And what we showed on the road at Dayton was some fight. And what we showed tonight was some quit. So... We do got some soul searching and some, uh, you know, some self exploration as a team. And uh, you know, even at the end of the game, and I've said this to the team after the game, I do have a level of confidence in this group, and I do think we will respond in the appropriate way. And I think we learned a valuable <laughs> lesson tonight about how far we have to go. Zach said that some of the conversation at halftime, he said he was being diplomatic about it or something, but he used the word soft. Yeah, I mean, I just used the word quit, you know, um, and that doesn't necessarily characterize the individuals in the group. It's a characterization of the group and their connection with one another and the level of fight that we brought to the table. And it's not necessarily who we are but it is how we performed. And so I don't necessarily think it's, a, it's, a, it's our character. Um, no more than the, the fight that we showed on the road is, a, is, is a necessarily, it's, it's just an aspect of what we're capable of. And tonight we show we're capable of some things that are undesirable and we need to fix it. Is that the type of play and, and you know, the quit and things like that, is that kind of, 
in the game or some of the fast break points, the points in the paint and things like that that you guys gave up? Yeah, I, I, attention to detail. You know, um, I think a lot of times people uh, mistake toughness for, you know, physicality and, you know, uh, you know, the way guys kind of express themselves on the court. And a lot of times toughness is simply consistently being able to do your job even when things aren't going your way. And that sort of toughness inside of a team takes time to develop. That team tonight won 13 games last year, brought a lot of guys back, and they're trending up because they've probably had some experiences like today. Um, so I, I think we're a team with a tough schedule that's got an opportunity to really grow and learn from this. And the confidence that I do have in the group, the makeup of the group, because of guys like Zach, um, that we'll, we'll, we'll go over this. We'll address it. We'll get on the practice court on Thursday. And uh, I'd be surprised if there wasn't a positive response. Now you said the, some of the stats and some of the numbers aren't as important as what you saw, but the 36% going 23 of 64 from the floor, um, what did you see that just kind of was this part of the, was that effort part of the struggle offensively, or was it just some, some bad looks, or what kind of what did you see? No, I thought we had some good looks. We had some point blank looks. We had some. We do have some guys that are still searching for individual confidence, and that can oftentimes create some selfishness. Even if you're not talking about a selfish individual, I don't think we. I don't think there's necessarily a situation where we have a selfish team. But when you're trying to play well, and you really want to perform. Sometimes your focus gets narrowed on yourself. And it's hard to think about that and the whole at the same time. And part of our challenge is to try to get them to think more about the whole. Um, and that does correlate some with the fact that we've got a new group of guys who are playing together and have a new opportunity and want to make the most of it. And so uh, giving some of that up, and trust in yourself and trust in one another, the cream kind of rises. And that's, uh, that's sort of what you saw on Friday night. They just kind of got lost in the game. And the next thing you know, a, a double digit lead had become a tie game and a one point game with two and a half minutes to go. And we didn't have that same sort of spirit. We didn't let go enough. And we missed a couple of chippies and a couple of easy shots, and guys got a little tight, and then they start thinking about themselves instead of just getting lost in the battle. I think the, the, the challenge for me, and the good thing is I'm a little bit older now, um, that I have to maintain a focus on the big picture and I've been doing this long enough to know that uh, adversity is really an opportunity for you to grow. So um, I think one of the great things about having a great schedule is that you do have to keep bringing it. You know, you, you're going to have to respond. And I, I think for what we want to do from a program standpoint, these lessons can really be good if you, if you take advantage of the opportunity to make the most of these lessons. And, we sure got ourselves a pretty good opportunity tonight. And uh, we'll find out a lot about ourselves. And, and uh, But you know what? We played Oklahoma State in a close scrimmage. And I remember asking these guys this past week, doesn't that seem like a really long time ago? And they're like, yeah, it was, it was, it was like October 15, but it seemed like forever ago. And so will this, if we learn from it and grow. And, and we'll be able to point to it as, at, at some point as something that helped us become who we, who we expect to become. And I have to have that foresight so that I can share it with them. But if I wallow, then so will they. And I won't. And so we'll get better. What did you see either in the first two games or practice that earned Jefferson
Harris in a starting nod tonight, and then, but then Jalen still got 22 minutes. Jalen was five minutes late for a film session last night, so I brought him off the bench. And I could have given the opportunity to any number of guys, but I wanted to put the best defensive team on the floor. And Jefferson's one of our better defenders, so I wanted to start the game with him, and it's as simple as that. Uh, Jalen's role is as a defender, um, but he was late, five minutes, you know, whatever traffic, whatever kept him. Was, um, I wasn't going to suspend him. I wasn't going to do, but I was just going to bring him off the bench. It was as simple as that. Um, Xavier Foster gets a few minutes there at the end. Yeah. Um, what have you seen from him lately, and what are some of the things that he has to do to, to find himself in a bigger role? Um, stack days together. You know, um, you know, he's just learning the game. He's bought into the team concept. This this journey for him is about growing as a young man and then carrying that growth onto the basketball court and learning basketball concepts so that he will have an opportunity to get confidence in what we're doing. And then once he does that, the, the talent part will take hold because the talent is really significant. But his attitude is so great. Everybody in his circle they have a great perspective on where he is and and we all, as a team, know that uh, he's a guy with tremendous future. But he's been out of basketball for a long time, and he's always relied on his physical ability. And so some of the simple things that go into executing and being a part of a team, he's just developing those things. So there's a pace, there's an appropriate pace that he needs to be at, and he embraces that, and, uh, I, and I appreciate him for that.